Hi, I'm Chelsea London Lloyd, and you are listening to Dying of Laughter. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, not funny. My mom has stage for cancer in her bones and in her breast. My dad's disease was 15 years, he died of ALS. I made a podcast about death, seemed like the thing to do. And if you're sad by all of this, well, you're gonna die too. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day to us all. It's going to be a happy week to us all or a sad week to y'all, depending on how you are doing. I'm Chels, Chels who else? It's Chelsea London Lloyd, and this is Dying of Laughter, the comedic look on grief. So much to say, so much to do. Happy to be back doing this, sharing things. And today I have thoughts on death, dogs, and deals. Honestly, three of my life's biggest passions. Death, you may be familiar with, which is why you're here. My dad died of ALS when I was a teenager. My mom has stage four breast cancer at the moment. For a long moment, for the past seven years. Dogs. I got a dog last year, found her on the side of the road in the sewage, and I'm getting by as a single dog mom. She had just had puppies, so we're two single moms on the go, and a lot comes up around that. A lot of intimacy, vulnerability, a lot of responsibility, and then deals. I'm a huge deals girl. I haven't really addressed this on the pod. It's also become a more recent hobby in the past year during the actor strike slash writer strike in Hollywood. I had more downtime this year and I got really into credit card points, miles deals. So I might share a little bit of that with you today. Just like just little tiny tips if I think they could be appealing in some way. I did my first solo trip abroad this past October. I went to Amsterdam mostly and I had my hotel and my flight covered by credit card points. And I think there's these assumptions that you have to spend a lot of money to make a lot of points, but there's actually a better way. Some people call it travel hacking or points and miles and tips. It's really just subscribing to the right blogs or listening to people who already do that, like me, who share tips. And there's little ways to save big. So I have a few ideas on all of those topics to share with you today. So where to start? Blocks and rocks. What rocks? What are my blocks? I think this is a nice little end of year wrap up. So I guess we'll start negative, if you will. I don't see myself as a negative person, but we all got to be negative sometimes. Okay. We can't just be positive pollies. We got to be negative Nancy's and it feels good to just vent. Okay. So something that has been blocking my mind or weighing on me, I should say, I turned down a movie. I turned down a feature film. It was a big deal for me. I've really never turned down work. And long story long, I think this could be its own episode, but it was in another state and it was last minute. And my life's biggest passion is performing on set. So this was a big deal. This was not personal to the film, but it was an independent film. It wasn't a big fancy, let's say Disney or Nickelodeon, or I don't know why I chose Disney Nickelodeon. It wasn't a big ABC film, for instance. It wasn't backed by Netflix. It was an independent project, which is great. Sometimes even better, I will say. But to uproot my life last minute for almost a month, I wasn't able to swing it. And it wasn't just that. I wasn't super passionate about the situation of not having a lot of information, uprooting my life, dog, side jobs. I host karaoke parties for rap parties and for holiday parties. So some studios hire the company and I come with them and I MC the holiday party for some fancy people and companies. And I had a bunch of those lined up, but it just, it felt like someone dropped from the film, which I think is what happened, which is very common. A reason you might drop from a film is because you booked something else or you had a holiday conflict or you booked something bigger or or you got cold feet or the project rubbed you the wrong way. I'm not sure, but for it to have been that last minute, I was not the first choice and that's actually totally cool, maybe even better. It's how you can get into some big projects, but it just was all coming together really quickly and there were some things that were confusing and I wasn't getting information on and I had some Zooms with production and they were late and they missed the Zooms and then I got personal texts and then the information was weird and conflicting and I was like, something in my intuition is telling me this is not the film for me right now and for the right amount of money, I definitely would and it I probably would have broken even if I had traveled out of state with the costs considering last minute missing jobs, dog X, Y, 
last minute flights, all that to say, I wouldn't have really been making money, which is also okay. But just for whatever reason in that moment, it wasn't a fit for me. It was a hard decision. I definitely cried. I lost sleep. At one point I slept for like four hours. I knew I had to get back to them and I was still kind of waiting for them to get back to me. And it was like very weird. So that to say, I turned on a film and that was hard for me. Next up, what else is a block? or a struggle, I should say. I listened to this podcast with Emma Chamberlain. She's a famous YouTuber. She was so insightful. She's 20. And I learned a lot from her about the industry, the social media industry, and her point of view. And she's so relatable and cute and charming. And I found the interview really interesting. It's with Alex Cooper. And that's a podcast called Call Her Daddy. So Alex Cooper had Emma on her podcast, Call Her Daddy. And it made me feel good, but then somehow bad it made me feel like I was envious of a person I do not know and that's just not okay I feel like I need to work on that this woman this person she is wildly famous and successful and we are in totally different buckets of life can life be in a bucket I'm not sure that sounds like I'm jumping into a pile of rain it is sprinkling here in Los Angeles which is not common Anyways, we're in different life buckets, but I just became weirdly jealous of her, I think, because I also really like podcasts, obviously, and I also, like, wanted to not like her, but I liked her, and that made me feel bad, and that should not be okay. We should uplift people. We should be excited about interviews and listening to things, but just sharing, I did have some comparison demons creep up on me, and also with the strike, I haven't been working as much this year because there was a big strike in Hollywood, as you are probably or possibly familiar with, so I think... Just these thoughts of comparing and X and Y and Z haven't been as prevalent in my mind as of late. I always say the entertainment industry is the Olympics of the craft, but it's also the Olympics of the mind. There's very deep, hard, weird things that continue to happen and you have to just not compare yourself to them. You have to pick yourself back up, not let rejection get you down. So I want to remind myself that this is the Olympics of the mind. So same for you if you're in the business and you haven't been having these deeper thoughts about comparing and booking and all of these things lately just reminder to be nice to yourself because it's it's a weird time to come back swinging having not been swinging for a lot of this year or maybe the industry that you're in has something similar where you compare yourself to others maybe it's just a universal experience okay um and the last block is there's this virus going around for dogs in a lot of states so there's lots of propaganda and emails and scary things about it so i haven't been able to put my dog in as much daycare she does she is a daycare girly not all the time, but just I'm single and having her by myself. Sometimes she's just a lot happier at her daycare. And I've been really conservative with that because I'm going out of town for Christmas. And if she gets this virus, not only would that be horrible, but no one's going to take her because she could infect other dogs. I mean, I'm sure I could find someone. I, I would have to find someone who would come to my place specifically, which is a lot harder to navigate. She already has a plan book. So just keeping her more at home all the time. I've noticed her become more bored, more irritable. You know, we're still doing all of our walks and all of our things. She's very spoiled. We go outside all the time. She comes with me places, but just not being as tired, not being as social. I notice the difference with her. Like she's chewing pens by mistake, like things like she's just, she's just annoyed. I'm like, girl, I'm trying to not give you a virus. And I just need you to know it's because I'm obsessed with you. So please just calm the hell down. Don't chew pens. It's not cute. I did buy her a new doghouse on Amazon. It's super cute. It's a yellow fluff ball of homes. I can't explain it. Uh, she had a metal crate the past year. It got, it's just so big and clunky. My friend gave it to me. It was a much bigger dog and I didn't want to pay a hundred dollars for a crate. So I've just had that crate in my living room. It was time to upgrade. So I, I let that go. But then I, I noticed her like wandering around and looking for a new home. And I was like, okay, we're getting a fluffy one that's portable. And I got one and she's obsessed. So the mom and me is trying. Okay. All right. Those are my blocks. What rocks? Well, some holiday shopping tips and things could be cute. So I'm going to share some deals for you guys, but I'll also just share on my end. I'm going to Vancouver for the holidays with my mom. Never been. Let me know your recs if you have any. We're going to go to Victoria Island and the gardens. We're going to do a dumplings class on Christmas Eve. And we're going to go to really nice restaurants and just be cute and walk around even though it's freezing. I've never been again. So that's exciting. It's something I kind of pitched to my mom because we didn't have plans. My younger sister is engaged, so she will be with her fiance and his family in Florida. And we just saw all of them for Thanksgiving, so we did just connect. So my mom and I were looking for a plan. So I pitched this idea. She doesn't want to travel too far. So this is about a three-hour flight from Los Angeles, so it worked out. With my Amex, we're staying at a very fancy hotel. Love that. Except buy three, get the fourth night free. Makes that price come down. You know we love to see it. Also, guaranteed late checkout. Daily breakfast for two and an $100 resort credit towards a restaurant or a spa. This comes 
with your Amex Platinum card when you book at certain hotels and I just love a deal. So on the note of deals, what also rocks is there is um, a few deals I'd like to share with you. Uh, on Rakuten, there's some deals. I don't know if you guys know what this is, but Rakuten.com is a way to get cash back on purchases that you are already making to CVS, to Target, Instacart, Marriott, Viator, TripAdvisor, Sephora, Ulta, the list goes on. It sends you a PayPal or a check. I personally use it. I can vouch this is not sponsored. I just am a huge fan of Rakuten. If you have an American Express, you can get points back instead of cash, which I personally think is more valuable. But if you don't, might as well get cash for things you're already spending. So I will drop a link to this episode where if you spend $30, you will get $30 back. So basically $30 free dollars that does not expire. Highly recommend. And just this could be a $30 purchase to any of the places on the site or that I listed. There's hundreds of options. And then you'll get $30 cash back. And what's cool is then you can refer a friend or family member. And then you each get $30 from that referral. And the list goes on. So highly recommend. This expires on December 31st of this year. They might have a new deal next year. But as of now, $30 free dollars for you on December 31st. The next deal I'll share is if you buy $100 on Amazon to Lyft. So if you purchase an $100 Lyft gift card, you're going to get $15 back to Amazon. So you'll use code Lyft at checkout to receive that. And same with Airbnb. If you buy a $250 Airbnb gift card on Amazon, use code Airbnb at checkout, you'll get $25 back to Amazon. So this is if you already needed those gift cards or you wanted to gift those gift cards to someone, maybe you'll use the credit for holiday travel. You might as well get a little back to Amazon. I use Airbnb gift cards for experiences. For instance, in Vancouver, we have our hotel set, but the dumplings class we're doing is an experience. So that is what I did. I bought a $250 gift card on Amazon, used it towards the experiences, still have some left over, but I can use it later because it doesn't expire. And then I got $25 to Amazon, which I used towards my dog's new little yellow fluffy house that I mentioned. So love a deal. Um, Yeah, I won't go too far down the rabbit hole, but I hope any of those could be interesting. Again, I don't really talk about deals on here. If you're into it, great. If not, all good. I did have a fun audition for a soap opera. It was um, it was it was cute. It was fun. I'll I'll tell you what it is later. But just just putting out good vibes. I would love to do the soap opera. It was like a fun funny little role. I also had a fun theater audition for a Jewish period piece casting here in the Southern California area. Only it actually is a play at the Laguna Beach Playhouse, very esteemed theater, and you would have to move to Laguna Beach for a couple months and they would put you up, which is so fancy. And I enjoyed doing that. Also had a commercial audition in person. So all that to say, it was really fun and interesting and fingers crossed. And I'm just so happy to be back in the swing of the biz, basically. So that's what rocks and what blocks. Looking forward to some holiday relaxation. I hope you get to chill too. Holidays can bring out the best and the worst in people if you're grieving. I'm sorry to hear that. That really sucks. If you're grieving, that really sucks. If you're anticipating loss, that really sucks. If this is your last holiday with a loved one or a friend or a family member that you care about, that really sucks. So feel free to share your story, who you're honoring, who you're thinking of this holiday season. Hit me up on Instagram at Dying of Laughter Podcast. Shoot me a message or a voice memo. I would love to hear and to honor your person. I could even shout them out on here. Let me know. The last thing I'll plug is Spirit Rock. I just finished a year-long program with them called A Year to Live, where you ponder what it would be like to live the last year of your life. It was all online and virtual. They are taking signups for next year. This is very specific and not for everyone, but if you are intrigued, Google Spirit Rock. Look at their upcoming programs. They do have in-person retreats, but specifically the Year to Live program is a year-long virtual program, and they have scholarships available So I found an affordable price point for me. They have all different levels. If you go the scholarship route, you can find a really beautiful way to connect with others who are also interested in exploring life and death. So I'll link some of this stuff in the show notes. Thanks so much for being here for this quickie McGee. We will be back with another interview the first week of January. Happy holidays, thinking of everybody. And and if you're like, this is not happy, then just holidays. No happy holidays. Just sending you holidays. Okay, you know what they say, and by they I mean I, Yodo, you only die once. See you so soon.